Well, then, my top-hatted co-conspirator. Yes. Let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, Steve, why are you so goddamn handsome? To which I say, well, I got it from my father. (laughs) In the sense that he was a cocky, self-centered son of a bitch as well. People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal, if, if not too loyal, employee at my local bookstore for almost 17 years. If my career were a person, then, uh, it would most definitely be time to start thinking about prom. This whole year would be... I'll be about getting ready. In fact, my dad used to give me tips like, Stevie, you're in high school now. You need some tips on how to get with the ladies. <laughs> you, here's a tip. Here's a tip. You take them to a nice place to eat. And then this is what you do uh, uh, when you know you're going to have the date that morning. You go out, Stevie, and you buy the paper. Yeah. And you just read it from cover to cover so that you can impress the woman on the date and say, oh, do you did you read that thing at the, in the Times? <laughs> and then they go, oh, no, I did not read that thing at the Times. Tell me more. And then you tell them about it because you read the paper. It's actually, so Tom, it's actually a very solid strategy if you think about it, it though. And I do have to give kudos to your father about it. You yeah. know. No, I, Tom and I used to do it every year. We... we Every year we would we were invited to prom. I ended up going to nine frickin' proms, but we would go to prom and um, every prom that we went to together, we would buy the paper. We would buy the paper, and really, you know, it says something about our relationship because really, it was just Tom and I going with ourselves, and our dates were always just kind of left out. But we would buy the paper and we would read it cover to cover, and then. We would take them to a nice restaurant, and then we would literally go, oh, did you read that thing in the Times? Oh, what part of the Times? Part B, page yes. three, the article on the top left about how the Middle East is in a quandary. Oh, yes, the quandary. Yes. Was this the article that was written by um, uh, Philip Jackson? Yes, it was that Philip Jackson article. That was amazing. Yeah, if if you read the newspaper, the more I think about it, the more I love this. Um, if you read the newspaper from cover to cover, you've got a really, really good chance of being able to talk about something that she's interested in. Yeah. You know, yeah. if it's politics or, or war or international relations or theater or movies you would be able to pull something a a funny cartoon you know you would have a a a really well stacked arsenal to use to manipulate a woman into sleeping with you yeah 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 every yeah my dad used to tell me that all the time he had all the tricks he had all the tricks yeah and as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here to yeah. thrust my moist fingers, trying to use the grossest words imaginable, thrust my moist Trumpian fingers in your mouth <laughs> with this week's installment of Notes from the Bookstore. Which has become oh, my favorite segment, sorry. Oh, how I missed you, Notes from the Bookstore. Yes. I missed you. I missed you. It ha- missed it, it you. has become my favorite segment. I missed your scent. In <laughs> fact, after I, when we're done with this, we should get an apartment together. <laughs> this week at your local bookstore, your lovable, bitter, cranky booksellers are all drowning in a sea of HRC books. Do you know what HRC stands for? Uh, I thought I did, but no, I got to tap out. No, you actually probably do, because HRC stands for Hillary Reptilian Clinton. Okay. 
Because he's a reptilian. That's what the R stands for. My 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 Hillary. my brain yes. my brain went to the to the Hollywood directory uh the Hollywood directory and I forget what the last word is. Are you from you you're probably familiar with that. It should come out once a year. Yeah, oh yeah. No, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Here you go. I filled it up and changed the color of it. Um the fact that that your local bookstore, all of the local bookstores are drowning in Hillary uh, Randolph Clinton's new book, Wahapon. You lost. <laughs> Wahapon. We had a lot of fun you with that. You lost. I got a real wed wagon, and I can't do my work. Yeah. So this all goes back to a previous episode of Notes from the Bookstore, specifically the episode where we discussed how you too can cheat the New York Times bestseller list. Our drowning status is a perfect example of how Hillary Rochester Clinton, her, uh, how she cheated her way onto the bestseller list. Preface time, though. It's it's time to preface this, SOB. I'm not saying that... that uh, Hillary R- Hillary Randall Clinton herself. I'm not saying that she specifically cheated the system. I'm not saying that because if she could cheat the system, then she would be freaking president. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. But Christ would she? Star, I was but, just talking about. But would she actually have to cheat the system? Or could she just call whoever is in charge of the New York Times and say, remember, I still have those tapes? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, Hillary read Robin Clinton. Hillary, the R in uh, HRC stands for Red Robin. (laughs) Yum. I was expecting you kids to do the yum part. You are all on double secret probation. So Hillary read Robin Clinton herself personally did not cheat the New York Times bestseller list, but her publisher, Simon and Schuster, sure as shoot did. And the evidence is in the fact that all of your local booksellers are drowning. I mean, we got a lot of her book once it came out, but pretty much nationwide. When you look at the big picture, we definitely didn't have enough. So it sold out, which causes demand, which then warranted the pub the 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 publishers, Simon Simon and Schustering, to send out more copies, and now we're drowning in the amount that we should have gotten in the first frickin' place. Yes. So the publisher purposefully shorted the original release at first in order to necessitate demand. Everyone minus J.K. Rowling does that. Yeah. And, and, there was a, and there was a media blitz on it, too. Yeah. She was all over the place. There were, you know, massive interviews. She was all over the mm-hmm. place. So then when the book came out, they said, okay, here's, um, here's, here's five boxes of the book. That should be enough, right? Meanwhile, a J.K. Rowling book comes out and goes, okay, now, this is palette four of the book. <laughs> Literally, that's what happens when a J.K. Rowling book comes out. I'm not saying that, uh, that uh, uh, Hillary Randy Clinton's book is a J.K. Rowling, but it's goddamn close. Yeah. She just lost a, a massively contested presidency. Of course, yeah. this is going to be a big book, you know? It's not like Simon and Schustering didn't think that Hillary Rodan Clinton's book was going to be a huge hit. So they obviously did the release that they did with a specific intent of screwing with the New York Times, creating a bit of a slightly false demand and uh, screwing me in the process. A, yes. a, a, and I call it false demand, not because people don't want the book, because of course they do it selling like mad. But what I'm saying is there's no way Simon & Schuster didn't expect it to sell like mad. So they screwed right. with the supply and demand of it. They're obviously, they were obviously sitting on copies. Right. So that it appears like it's selling 
matterer uh-huh. than it actually is. Yes. Yes. It's ridiculous. So yeah, no, I'm drowning in Hillary. I'm drowning in a sea of Hillary, which is also, interestingly enough, uh, the nightmare that Bill has every night. Yes. Drowning in <laughs> Just came up with that. Didn't write that. Yeah. That was an extra bit because I because I you know I'm quick on my feet. That that like just Speedy makes Gonzalez. yeah. That just makes that just makes so much sense because if somebody comes in for her book as a bookseller, what do you say? Oh, I'm sorry, we're sold out. We're expecting more. Blah blah blah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and. I I would doubt the average customer is going to like question you much further on that. Yep. You know, so they're just going to walk away like, wow, this book is hot. Yeah. It just came out and there's, it just came out and they're sold out already. Yeah. Yeah. Most book releases do this in the hopes of succeeding and Hillary Clinton indefinitely succeeded. Yes. Now, J.K. Rowling, uh, she knows, like, okay, this is going to be a huge book, so we need to make sure that every store has the exact amount. Every other, every other, you know, maybe James Patterson does that, but every other book, like Stephen King's new book, uh, yeah. we have uh, 500,000 copies of the book ready to go, but here's 20 copies. Yes. And, you know, this is this is exactly why... This has become well. There are two reasons, but this is a this was a pretty big one of why this segment has has become my favorite. Okay, I will guarantee you that there is no other podcast on this planet that is covering the seedy underbelly of the book industry. Yeah, I'm trying to make this part of the podcast about those things that booksellers know and that bookstore employees know, but that no one else would think of. What the parrot saw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're having a hard time wrapping your head around what I'm talking about in regards to Hillary Clinton's book release, just think of literally Every video game system that has been released over the last 20 years. Oh, I'm sorry. We're all sold out of PlayStation 4s. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get them in in the next two or three weeks. Which makes... Sony is sitting on like... 10 million fucking PlayStation 4s. They're, they're, just, they're just waiting. They're just creating uh-huh. a false supply and demand. Every yes, but it makes... But it ma- does. Yeah, but it makes the news cover it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lineups outside of Best Buy waiting for the PlayStation 4. Yeah, but nobody thinks about, about that when they come in looking for a new book and, oh, it, oh, it's sold out? Oh, shoot, I really wanted it. Now I want it two times... As much, yeah. because you don't have it. Yeah, psychologically, same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, People want what they can't have. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's, that's psychologically proven. If you limit, like, that's why people are like limited time only. They sell a shit ton of that limited time only thing, even though they could have it all the time. It sells more. Yes. When. Yeah. And they say it's limited time only, and they take it away from you. Because yeah. People don't like it being taken away from them. Yeah. That's and, why when. When and I thought related to I, that, related to what Tasha just said, okay, that reminds me of something that that I had learned when I was in my psychology class that if you want somebody to like you, okay, you do not do nice things for them. You get them to do something nice for you. Yeah. And now they have an investment that they have to justify. I, yeah. I, I, I must really like this person if I help them move. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something when I was like in that. charge 
when I was in charge of the children's department, I was 100% convinced that somewhere on the hidden internet or the deep web or something like that, that there was a website called what Steve is out of dot com. <laughs> and that a, a massive hidden cabal of all the people who hate me created this website so that people who lived near my bookstore would know exactly what I'm out of and then rush in because it was uncanny. I'm like, oh, look at this. We're out of the Magic Treehouse book 12. Oh, isn't that interesting? Oh, look, here's an angry old white person coming in. Gee, I wonder what they're going to be looking for. Yes, do you have Magic Treehouse? No, I know exactly which one you're looking for because it's the only one we're out of and we are out of it. Damn it. I'm just going to have to go to Amazon then. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Say hi to the, say hi to all the other people who run that website. Yeah. That's why I'm happy I'm in receiving. Yeah. And speaking of receiving, this week on notes from the bookstore, I want to talk about my current job. I am the store's receiving manager, so I get to dress however I want. Yes. I get to listen to my music all day. I get to text my wa- destiny and text my wife. I get to uh, act however I want. I, I have my coffee there with me and uh, sometimes some snacks. I always have gum. And uh, I get to dress however I want. And I know that because I once came to work dressed as a pirate. <laughs> And I've I've done a few uh, I've done a few shipping and receiving jobs in my life. You could get away with a virgin sacrifice in a shipping and receiving area. Yeah, yeah. Maxwell, what are you freaking out about? What are you freaking out about? What are you freaking out about? I know this was empty, and I didn't have time to f- fill up your water bottle, so I just gave you. Bella's uh, Eleanor's water bottle. I figure you understood me when I when you gave me your empty water bottle and said, "I want someone to fill up my water bottle." And then I put it behind this box and said, "Here, I filled up your water bottle and m- made it change color." Yes. I assumed you understood what I meant. What? You're drinking Bella's. You're drinking Eleanor's water bottle. Okay. I want it now. Oh, you don't want it now. Okay. Isn't that interesting? So. The story of how I became the receiving manager, the story of how I got this job is actually a crazy one that not too many people know. So I thought that I would share with you guys here uh, the story of how I got this job in a rough, rambling, non-scripted format. All right. So when I was in Sacramento, when I was working at the bookstore there, uh, I was there for about a year shelving until a a lead bookseller position became available back in the day when Barnes and Noble was a lot more successful. There were lead bookseller positions all over the store. We had someone who was, whose job was just to work in magazines. Uh, yeah. One person whose job was just to work in bargain. One person whose job was just to work in this section of the store and that section in the store. I remember lead booksellers who would just work in uh, uh, cooking and craft books. I remember yeah. lead booksellers who were just in charge of Red, travel. Yellow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Morgan, well, every kids, yeah, magazines. yeah. And there were so many different lead booksellers. Nowadays, the only lead bookseller position is in uh, the children's department. Although to be fair, no, remember they were like we're eliminating all the leads for the colors. We're only going to have children's and bargain and magazines. Yeah, and then we were like, and then what? they got rid and of, then they got rid of bargain, bargain and magazines. Turned into kids, and yeah. then they were like, we only have magazine and kids, and they were like, yeah, well, kids is going to be the only lead position we've got. But then they said. Oh, uh, now that we have our own e-readers, we have uh, this digital sales lead position available. So come in and only come in and only sell uh, e-readers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was a uh, so. Yeah. But now uh, the company is specifically saying, "Yeah, uh, there's no business in this. We're getting out of the electronics business." So we're no longer we're no longer making these electronics, and it's like okay, well, bye bye, uh, another lead position. So uh, yeah, being a kids lead is difficult nowadays because there's so few leads that if you're a, a kids lead, it's like 
uh, good job getting the kids lead position. You are in charge of the children's department. Also, you will be covering this break and this break and this break and this break and this break. Also, you'll be the only customer service person on the floor for the next six hours. Yeah. And we'll expect you to do all of these non-kids things, uh, set up all of these displays in the store that we just don't have people to do. Okay, have fun in kids. And also, you won't be in kids. Yes. So there was a lead position available, and I, I interviewed for the position. And a manager it, it asked me, and they said, Steve, you've been here for about a year, maybe less than a year. You, you have not been here for long. I am interviewing people who have been here for five years, six years, eight years, and they want this position too. Why should I give this job to you? the newbie in the store instead of giving it to someone who's been here for eight years. Answer me that, Steve. Yes. This guy ended up hating me for the longest time, but that was the question that he... Uh, mm, 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 mm. <gasps> that, that was the question that he asked me, and I said, well, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I don't feel like lying, and it, it would be pointless. Um, there are days... When I come in and I say, I am feeling sick, I'm going to take it easy. I am going to relax and not work that hard. And I still, on those days, when I am about to vomit, I still work twice as hard as all the other people in this store. Yes. Sure. And he just turned to the other manager and said, Jesus, I like this guy. <laughs> and, I, and I got the lead position. And I was in charge of Red, which was the hardest section because it was bestsellers. It was fiction. It was mystery. It was also true crime, which was weird. <laughs> we put the true crime section right next to mystery, which makes sense. But also it doesn't because one is true and one is fake. Yeah. Um, that's like putting the science section next to sci-fi. Yeah. Like you just do that. You Why know? Why not you? Huh? Fuck you. You're ruining my flow. <laughs> I was on the roll. He's just like, pump the brakes, Steve. Now, if you put religion and sexuality next to each other, or the lesbian gay section that we had, in, it, which was close to the religion section in that store, but not quite. Yeah. There were like there was a shelf between them. I yeah. remember that. In my first store in Arizona, the in, religion section was right next to the Harry Potter section, and um, no, Arizonans no. did not like that. <laughs> in in yeah. her in her defense, Tasha only spoke what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I was but I was thinking the same thing too. It just it just makes sense to have all of the fiction in one section and all of the okay. nonfiction in another section. It screws people up to have fake things and real things right next to each other. Yes. When it comes to the flow of the store. I was in charge of all of science fiction. I was in charge of all of graphic novels. I was in charge of the 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 crosswords. I was in charge of the puzzles and games. It was a big, massive section, and I've always been hyperactive, so I did it all every, every month, and I did a great job. And so the kids' lead at the time hated kids and would constantly smoke pot on their lunch breaks. Yeah. So when she left, they said, we need somebody to, to be in charge of, of the kids' position. Is there anybody here who likes kids? At that exact time, we had our first Harry Potter Midnight Magic Party. Uh -huh. And that was comprised of, okay, we're staying open until midnight. There's going to be all these kids running around and we need to entertain them. Steve, here's trivia and some stickers to give them. Have fun. Bye. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, kids, I'm going to do trivia. Okay, you don't care? Great. These stickers are all mine. <laughs> These, none of you get these awesome Harry Potter stickers. These are all mine now. Oh, but I want some. Well, too bad. You didn't answer the trivia. And I just walk <laughs> away all pissed off. And they're like, but wait, come back. What's your name? Your name tag says Steve. My name's not Steve. That's just a trick. My name is Cletus, and I'm not doing trivia. <laughs> you had one chance, and you lost it. So... Somebody saw that somebody was paying attention. They're like, oh, my God, Steve is good with kids. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I hate children. But they're like, okay, look, you're going into the children's department. So I took the kids' lead position. And uh, the, the kids' lead also had to do story time. Thank yes. you, Maxwell. 
and I hated story time, and they don't tell you how to do it. They don't tell you how to do it. They just say, you're in charge of kids. Have fun doing story time. Bye. Yes. So, so that was difficult. I took a lot from uh, Steve Martin and Andy Kaufman. Nice. Okay. I literally stole a lot of Steve Martin's bits. Like I would pull out balloon animals and go, I'm going to, who wants to make some balloon animals? And the kids all freak out and they go, and I go, oh, wait, have you seen people do balloon animals before? Oh, then I'm not going to do it. No, if you've seen balloon animals before, you know, I try and do stuff different. So I'm not going to do it. Oh, you still want me to? Okay, well, how about this? I'll do balloon animals. I just won't inflate them. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm just flopping these balloon these like a uh, bo- these balloons around and there you go doggy. <laughs> and the kids are all laughing and they're like, "Oh my goodness, he's the funniest guy in the world." And I go, "Yeah, and I totally didn't steal that from Steve Martin on the Muppet Show. <laughs> this is all original to you kids." So so yeah, and then things like uh, like I always try and read adult books to the children, and the yeah. kids don't know that Andy Kaufman used to do that with the Great Gatsby during yes. his comedy routines. This is just my thing. Like I, I stole a lot of things where it's just me screwing with the kids, but eventually I, I came up with my own theory, and the theory is is that I. Every story time is an interactive experience in which the kids have a mission, and that mission is to get to the end of story time. But there's a bad guy at story time, and it's yeah. his mission to try and screw, mess everything up, screw everything up, do everything wrong, and try and stop story time. The catch is that person is me, the guy in charge. Yes. <laughs> so you adults might have a problem with this, but guess what? I'm teaching your kids to question authority because <laughs> I'm in charge and I don't want to do story time. <laughs> That's basically my theory, my thesis for story time. So it became huge. And then uh, I transferred to Oklahoma and I knew at the time I was transferring to Oklahoma specifically because the manager at the time said, well, we just canceled story time. Yeah. Because you probably don't know about uh, Oklahoma, Steve, but this is this is Norman, Oklahoma. It's a college town. There's not a lot of parents here. So we just don't feel the need to do a story time. So we just stopped. And I told her, I said, look, you don't believe in story time. You give me a year. You give me eight months, six months. You give me six months and that ball, I can run with it and show you that story time is something important. So she goes, well, okay. I mean, you can come here, but you can't be kids lead. We have a kids lead. Yeah. So I came in and the kids lead was old and the kids lead had health problems. And there was a part of me that's like, okay, well, I can't be kids lead, but looking at this old woman, something tells me if I just wait, yeah. <laughs> and have faith eventually I might get a kids lead yes. position so I waited and waited and waited and it, it, like it, the person in charge of kids just wasn't going anywhere and it just upset me so after a few years I just thought okay I need to, I need to come at this from a different angle so the way I saw it was um, if a children's department becomes a million dollar store yes if if it becomes so successful that it's making a million dollars if it's so super successful then that that kids section gets two kids leads and that's what happened to me after a number of years working in california my section became so successful that even though we were in a small store that we were so good in, I was so good in the children's department that I got a second kids lead and in perfect Oak, California bookstore uh, uh, history, they said, okay, we need a second kids lead. And I guess we will just pick the first person who wants the job. You want the job? Great. You're in your 50s and you hate children and you're an alcoholic and you have a history of drug abuse. Have fun (laughs) in kids! (laughs) So that was fun for me. Yeah. Um, Yeah. 
and Natasha just realized who I was talking about. That was really fun for me. He exuded children, didn't he? Oh, he was definitely <laughs> just watch my children. Yeah, yeah. He, he was just such a great guy. Did he have a swastika huh? cut into his forehead? No, but um, uh, we would go to the trash film orgy together, the Sacramento the Sacramento uh, Midnight Band Movie yeah. Festival. We would go every year, and it was always difficult because it started at midnight, so by the time we would show up for the movie, he was already way drunk off his ass. So it became like babysitting. Yeah. It became less, let's go out with him, and more, oh, God, we got to take care of him now. <laughs> He was one of those people that it's like 2005. Yeah. But, oh, I don't care. I am I am lighting up a joint. I don't <laughs> care that you're in public. Last time it was Honey. Oh, why did you say something? I didn't, I I, I didn't hear you. Yeah. I didn't hear what you were looking for. I said I was looking for his water bottle. So I decided that the best thing to do if I wanted the kids lead position in Oklahoma was just to try and make the children's department better. It was difficult because the kids lead at the time was very old and had health problems and she wasn't friendly. So I, so every month we pick a different children's book and it's on sale. It's $7.99 with the purchase of any other children's book and nobody paid attention to it nobody cared it was not a big deal but one day i went to the manager and i said hey can i go to the back to the uh, computer and uh pull up wikipedia and he said why and i said because i know you guys don't like announcements here but i swear if you give me a blank piece of paper in wikipedia for like five minutes i can come up with a good announcement that can sell this book it's ridiculous that we're selling the giving tree and we're not selling any copies. We sell more copies at full price than we are selling right now at seven ninety nine, And that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So give me a blank piece of paper and five minutes I'll come up with something. So I started coming up with these announcements for each book and it was so successful. And every copy we sold, that money went to the children's department. And after about a year and a half, we became a million dollar children's department. And oh, look, we can hire a second kids lead. And I was first on the list and I got the position. And the surprising part, the part that I bit my tongue about was that the person in charge of kids said, and they didn't even bother to give me a raise after I worked oh. so hard making this a million dollar children's department. Oh. <laughs> like, really? Really? You worked so hard? I saw you asleep in the children's department once. Yeah. So you can yeah, stop that. Yeah, but, you know, to, to be fair, they could have chucked her a nickel or a dime. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. So she didn't earn it. You know, definitely she didn't earn it. But chuck her and chuck her a nickel or a dime to keep her trap shut. Yeah. So cut to. Cut to. I've been the children's lead for about a year and a half. Yeah. My. My uh, other kids' lead is long gone, and I have a new kids' lead. We get along well. We're working really hard. It's a great children's department. Our, that's when we get our word that our current receiving manager, farm boy veteran, yes, is going back to war. Yes. So... Um, the manager at the time says, well, we need someone to work in the receiving department. So I guess we'll have to hire somebody. Ah, but I just don't want to. That's so hard. Yeah. And uh, we just don't have the money for what, like a second receiving manager? No, we need somebody in the store. Who has the most experience? Let's see. This person's been in the store. They've been working with the company for four years oh maybe him oh uh 
who's this here? Mr. Blue Jeans? Let's name him Mr. Blue Jeans. Uh, Mr. Blue Jeans, he's been here for, wow, seven years. And let's see, uh, how long has Steve been here? Oh, my God. <laughs> I need to talk to Steve right now. Steve, hi, how are you doing? Will you be receiving manager, please? Just for a little bit. I swear, just for a little bit. Yeah. It's like, okay, I don't really know anything about receiving. Okay, but you get to come dressed however you want. You get to listen to your own music. You can bring your coffee back there to receiving. And we will only need you for October, November, December, January, and February. (laughs) It's like, wait a second, but that's the holidays. That's Black Friday. That's Christmas. That's uh, inventory. That's the worst time in the world. And you want me to be this position I've never had before. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yes but then but but it's only for a little bit and and not for a long time and i we swear that that will only be it and i go okay fine i, I i'll agree to be the receiving manager but only for a little bit and the reason why i agreed to it is because i have worked at the with this company for almost 17 years and in that time i have had about 11 or 12 different receiving managers and three of them have told me that the receiving manager position is really hard and is very physically uh, exerting. Yeah. You have to lift a lot of heavy boxes, and it's very difficult. And, Steve, there's no way you could do this position. Okay. Oh, so uh, you think you could be the, the receiving manager? Yeah, I don't think so. Have fun reading your books. But we're doing the hard work back here. Yeah. So that's really the reason why I agreed to be the receiving manager. If you want me to do something, the best thing for you to do to guarantee that I do it is just tell me I can't. Yes. Oh, there's no way you could be receiving manager. Oh, yeah, screw you. I'm going to be receiving manager. But but I I really think that this this helps back up my theory of hide the Mexican, you know? Oh, because oh yeah, because okay, you're in a jam. You need to ask somebody to do something really shitty. You go to the guy who's probably got the least seniority, you know? Okay, yeah. that makes sense. All right, yes, yeah. that makes sense. But. You 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 then want to get the guy who made a million dollar kids department out of that receiving department as quick as you can. Like yeah. okay, fuck. We're okay, we're fucked. Steve, can you do this? Yes, great, awesome. Okay. Let's put in a let's put in a an ad in a newspaper for a new receiving guy. And get him back into kids. Yeah. You see? You, yeah. you wouldn't be like, yeah, you'll be there for six months. <clears throat> yeah. You're a valuable then, employee in, in what you're already doing. Yeah. But then, three months into my six-month period... We get a call from the army. Hi, this is army man from army. Yes. We are informing you that a uh, farm boy veteran will be back in April for four months. And then he's leaving for 14. Have fun. Bye. <laughs> so this is where things get tricky. This is where things get tricky because the manager at the time said, well, we will definitely have to hire another receiving manager. There's no doubt. We will have to hire another receiving manager. I didn't want to do it. I put it off for as long as I can, but okay, we need another receiving manager. Now let me talk to Steve. Steve, I just want you to know not to worry. We'll find someone to replace you. Hey, who wants to be receiving manager? <laughs> Steve, don't worry. We'll find someone to take your place soon. Who wants this position of manager? (laughs) And Mr. Blue Jeans, 
who has always wanted this position is suddenly magically has magically appeared there like a vampire. <laughs> Just magically appeared. Yes, I want the position. Okay, great. We're going to interview you first. Steve, don't worry. We'll find someone soon. Okay, Mr. Blue Jeans. We're going to interview you. And hey, this interview is going great. And hey, I can't f- officially tell you you're going to have the job, but you're going to have the job. <laughs> wink, wink. You're definitely going to get this receiving job, which you have wanted for so long. <laughs> so so, so they're interviewing and interviewing and interviewing for such a really long time. And, and it, it, it gets to the point where I start getting a bit offended. So I go to the manager and I'm like, hey, how come you didn't interview me? I think I'm doing a really, really good job. And the manager says, oh, you are doing a really good job. You're doing a great job. Here's why I didn't offer it to you. Look, if you're in receiving, you can't do story time. Story time is something that is specifically coded to be something that a kid's lead does. There is not a single receiving manager in the history of this company that has ever done story time. What, you think you're going to be the first receiver to do story time? Basically, you'll be a unicorn wrapped in a mermaid that had sex with Bigfoot. (laughs) There's no such thing as a receiver who does story time, and there's no way we can allow it. So if you want the position, we'll definitely give it to you. It's just that you'll have to give up story time. So I go, okay, well, I definitely want to keep story time. I've worked really hard, and I've got a Facebook page, and it's got a crap ton of likes. And, yeah, I I don't want to give up story time. So have fun finding another receiving manager. So they keep doing interviews. They keep doing all all this sort of stuff. Then about a month later, the vice president in charge of loss prevention for the entire company Mm. comes for a visit. And so I'm talking to this guy, I'm charming him, and the guy's talking to me about what do I do to make sure that uh, the box count is correct? What do I do to verify the count that the delivery man gives you? How do you know that that number is true? How can you believe what they have to say? How do you know that they don't have a box of, of books that are just hiding in the truck? How do you know that they're not liars? And I gave them... A, a apparently revolutionary idea, which is, um, well, I get to know the deliverer, the delivery guys, and they're mm-hmm. like, "Excuse me, what did you say?" And I go, "I go, yeah, I have a cheat sheet here. Let me show you on my clipboard that I keep around to make myself seem important. Um, so here's UPS, the delivery guy's name, Mark, and here's a list of the things he likes to talk about." <laughs> he likes to talk about how much his feet hurt, The Walking Dead, and Leonard Skinner. Mm-hmm. Now, here is the FedEx guy. His name is Jamie. This is how old he is. And he likes to talk about how much his girlfriend gives him crap. <laughs> like, I'm just blown away. But it's not like I'm saying something shocking. It's like a, my theory is be nice to people. Yeah. But apparently he had never heard that before, and it blew him away. So uh, when he left, his specific words were, so uh, when is that guy going to be your new receiving manager? Wait, what, you didn't give him the job? He is amazing. <laughs> Seriously, give him the job. <laughs> So, like, 45 minutes later, after I imagine a lot of arguing with between the store manager and the district manager over how they didn't want to do it, yeah, they said, okay, Steve, the regional vice president was blown away, so we are willing to give you the receiving manager position. So you can have it. Yeah. Just give up story time. Oh! But there was a part of me that was like, Sophie's wait a second. Sophie's choicing your ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. They gave me such shit. So there was a part of me that's like, okay, well, I already told you I don't want to give up story time. So something tells me that you're only doing this so that I cannot be the receiver. You know? Yeah. Like, I think that y- you don't want to give me this position. Yes. You want me to stay in the kids' lead position so you can give this to Mr. Blue Jeans. Mm-hmm. Like, wait a second. Um, he already told you to give me the position. You know what? No, I want to be the receiving manager now. <laughs> 
I want to be the receiving manager, and I want to do story time. Oh, well, we can't allow that. We can't. We can't do that. We can't allow that. Okay. Well, um, I want to be the receiving manager, and I want to do story time. So I really want you guys to make it work. So we fought and fought for about a month. They gave me, well, you need to give us some time to think it over. And they, they thought for like a month, and eventually they gave me a deadline, and they said, Steve, this is your deadline. Your deadline is the end of this month. By the end of this month, we need a yes or no. Are you going to be the receiving manager and give up story time? Or are you going to keep doing story time and go back to being the kids' lead, which is what you want to do? You should do that. Do that, Steve. Do that. Okay. And I'm complain. I'm telling all of this to my other kids' lead. Her name is Katie, and she's doing story time in the six months that I'm stuck back in receiving. So, um. She hears me complaining, and so that's when she starts her campaign. Yeah. And she goes to story time and says, Hey, kids, that's the end of story time. And uh, so you guys miss Steve, right? Well, guess what we're doing now? The end of story time, instead of coloring, we're going to make We Miss You Steve cards. Oh, sweet. we be doing this all month. And I'll be sure to get all of the cards you make and uh, put them in the break room. Isn't that a great idea? Oh. Yeah, I'm going to be putting all these cards in the break room. Oh, you want to do two? You can make two or maybe three. You want to make four? That's fine. <laughs> so finally the deadline came along and and uh, the manager is like, okay, well, uh, the district manager is about to come today to to – to finalize this so what's your answer steve <laughs> and i was going to say i was going to say i want to do story time but i decided at the last second to just say the thing that they kept denying over and over again and i said well i think i think i'm great in receiving i'm surprisingly good at it and uh i think i should be the receiving manager and i want the position but I also want to keep doing story time. Yes. And so he said, okay, well, I'll talk to the manager again, but I've talked to the manager a million times, and he's just not going to do it. So the, the district manager came in and said, so what did Steve say? Oh, so he still wants to do story time, huh? Well, we're going to have to tell him. Wait, what are all those things on the wall? <laughs> oh, really? They're cards for Steve? Oh, oh, look, they drew his face. <laughs> God damn it. Tell him he can do both. I guess we just, <laughs> I guess we just hired a unicorn. That's going to be fun for us. That is awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a unicorn. Yeah. And um, I, I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It, it, receiving managers are supposed to work Monday through Fridays. To always be there for the deliveries. So I work Monday through Wednesday. I have Thursday off. Then I work Friday and Saturday. And I'm the only receiver who works Saturday. So I can do story time. Nice. I fought ass up for this. And now that store manager has left to another bigger store in Oklahoma City. And our new store manager is there. And I told her this story. And she said, okay, number one, I didn't know this story. And number two, what's the big deal? It's an hour. You do story <laughs> time for an hour. Mm -hmm. what's the big deal of letting you do story time for an hour you're great at it and the kids love you what's the big deal and I go I don't know what the big deal is but apparently it's such a big deal that a vice president has to show up <laughs> so that's how I got my job but my you current. stood your goddamn ground thank god I stood my goddamn ground because I was just going to say no but at the last second I decided to reiterate what I had said and still stand my ground and it was the fact that I still stood my ground that got me the job yeah uh huh so yeah that's how I got my job oh and also um, Mr. Blue Jeans was really pissed yeah. postscript to the story Mr. Blue Jeans was really pissed because he was essentially uh, offered the job yeah. Uh, then I got it, and so he was really excited about that. So after about uh, six months, he left, and then he came back, 
with a real big attitude and seemed to, uh, maybe I'm reading into things, and he wasn't, in fact, pointing out all of my flaws to management constantly. Yeah. Management liked the job I was doing, so he left again, and this time he was gone for good. Good. I, I, until, until a month ago when he came back. And now he is literally not talking to me. <laughs> like he came in and it's like, oh, hey, Mr. Blue Jeans, I'm so glad you're back. We need so much help. And oh, my God, you're not talking to me. <laughs> okay. This is the thing now? All right. Well, I'm just going to shut my mouth because you are not even talking to me. And this is awkward as hell. <laughs> So, yeah, I work with the guy all the time now, and he just won't talk to me. So I told this story to the store manager specifically so that it's like, yeah, you should probably know why there's a person working who won't talk to me. <laughs> that might be – That might be. to be fair, if I was Mr. Blue Jeans, I would hate me too. Yeah. No, no, no. I, mean, I was going to call him the Blue Jean Committee. But <laughs> jeans. He always wears jeans, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He's, his name is the same name as a character on a TV show. The TV show is named after this character. Yeah. So I'm going to call him the name of the actor who plays him on the show. But unfortunately, that actor's first name is another person who works with me. So I just uh -huh. had to come up with some like fanciful shit. Yeah. Mr. Blue Jeans. He hates me. But the the other reason why this has become like my favorite bit is that it, it, it's so much your blog and what your blog was. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. So when you're telling Okay, 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 okay we, fine. Fine. No, 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 no. Okay. Hmm? Number one, shut up. <laughs> Number two, you want me to say it? Fine. This podcast is my blog now. Is that what yes. you want to hear, Bunny? Uh, yes, it is part of what, what I want to hear. Yeah, yeah. Fine. There. Because, I because like, my blog because I, I wrote a funny, smart-ass review of a Kmart, which yes. I thought was funny, and then suddenly... Half of this city hates me, and I don't want to use my blog anymore. Oh, why didn't you tell me that? You know I can fight. I can fight in a comment section. <laughs> Kmart's closing now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wrote a – like, I went to, to, to the Kmart, Yeah. and it was so shitty. I started taking pictures, and I thought it'd be funny to write, like, a sassy-ass review of the Kmart. Yeah. And then the next thing I know, like, I check the post two days later, and it's been seen 5,000 times. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Yeah. And then I check a, a day later, and it's been seen 20,000 times. And then, like, the next day, I get a, a, uh, a message on Twitter from Kmart corporate office saying, yeah. Reverend Steve is not allowed. <laughs> to post on the Kmart Facebook page anymore. And it's, wait a second, I was accidentally tagged in a corporate memo about how I'm not allowed to talk about Kmart on social media anymore. <laughs> like, literally, John, K John J. Kmart is now, like, uh, banning me from shit in some corporate office somewhere, I'm assuming in Virginia. Nice. And it's like, okay, this has gotten too big, like, I'm done. And I got, like, 50 comments and i only published like half of them because like some of them were like oh yeah that kmart sucks i used to work there and and then like the other ones were fuck you you piece of shit <laughs> the people who work there are hard-working people and you don't even know them but then like half of them too were uh okay i just want to point out that you talked about how that cinco de mayo shirt was racist but then you call people rednecks, and that is racist against white people. So who's the racist one here? You are, because you're being racist against whites. Uh-oh, uh, uh, like, okay. I ain't no fucking redneck, bitch. I am so fucking tapping out of this. I am done. I don't know when I'll see my blog again, but bye-bye. Like, I, I was just...
it is yeah. physically impossible for a New Yorker to be a redneck. Yeah. Oh my God! I, so many people in Oklahoma are just poor, sad, unfortunate victims of reverse discrimination. Oh no! There's so much racism against whites. I mean, there are rednecks in the other the that other part of New York that's like not New York. Yeah, you know, because it's New they, York. Then there's other parts that people don't hear about. Yeah, where they keep Binghamton and and. Albany, like nobody's got a use for Albany in New York. And and all the mutants. All the mutants, yes. Yeah, I believe that's Westchester. Yeah. Wherever the hell that is. But a a New Yorker, an an actual New Yorker, and I'm I'm sure Guillermo can, can attest to this, physically impossible for them to be a redneck. Yeah, they could still be douchebags, but they're not a redneck. Nice. That I did not know. Oh, I also they, wanted to. They mention could be. Too, they could be. They could be clan members. Yeah. Yeah. They're still I not also. A, they're still I not also. A redneck. I, I wanted to mention this last week to uh, uh, Guglielmo, if you're listening. Uh, you're in New York, so be on the lookout for Hurricane Debbie because she's there somewhere. She's <laughs> five foot, possibly four eleven, and uh, yeah, she will be the one who who is constantly talking about how horrible I am. Yes, don't yes. mention me to her. Yes, she's she's gentrifying the neighborhood, and she probably can also see your chakras. Yeah. Yeah. And that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. And remember, boys and girls and transgendered squirrels, you too can save 10% off of all of your purchases. And all you have to do is please, please buy at least 12 copies of Hillary Clinton's new book book it would really help me out (laughs) at least 12 because i am drowning here and y'all need to help me out (laughs) 